Hello and good morning. Um, welcome to Yoga Solutions <clears throat> podcast with me, Mark J. Aquaviva. Um, yes, today I wanted to share with you a little bit of insight I've been developing around um, flow, the move, um, moving with in harmony with the breath. And um, yeah, yeah, well, uh, there, there is a kind of traditional way of doing it. And the most common way, which I've, I've not really been that in favor of, uh, and I'll tell you why in a minute, but the most common way of um, <clears throat> introducing a, a, a breath harmonized flow is to do up movements with the inhale and down movements with the exhale. So you, you inhale up and you exhale down. And for years I didn't think of it, I, I didn't think it was wrong. I, I, I think of it as something that goes with how people already do things. So um, there's nothing essentially wrong with inhaling to lift and then dropping down towards the ground when you release the breath. Um, except uh, it doesn't offer you anything new, it doesn't offer change. What it, what it does is it kind of entrenches the normal way of doing things. And let me give you a bit of explanation about, my, about this. The arriving breath, the, the inhale, can support you up. But the majority of people are um, led by their intention to, to do the movement. So what they do is they lift in order to breathe, which is a subtle difference, but it's not having the experience of being supported by your breath. It's lifting in order to breathe, which is something that you do when you're stressed. It's something you do when you're uh, tense, when you're frightened, when you're fixed in the space. You hold yourself up in order to breathe. You lift a bit more so that there's room in your body for the breath to arrive. Okay. And dropping yourself down as you release the breath is perfectly natural. Um, if what you want to do is go to sleep, if, you, if what you want to do is relax, you, you want to head towards the ground and, and stay there <laughs> as, you, as you fall asleep. So it, it kind of makes sense that if you want to flow in your yoga postures, and you don't want to have to change anything, then the simplest way of doing things is to lift in order to extend and to drop in order to flex, to lift, to do up postures, to drop, to do down postures. And it makes sense intellectually as well. It's easy to understand. And so it makes for a flow of sorts. <clears throat> but, what is being missed by that is the nature of the breath itself doing the supporting. Um, I'll, I'll see if I can give you an example. Okay, let's uh, put my slightly broader camera on. There it is. Um, <clears throat> so let's say you're... Yeah, uh, I'll keep it simple because... Um, this is the camera I've got, so let's do a, a seated twist. I'm a little bit dark, I'm just brighten myself up a bit. Uh, one second. That should do it. So, um, yeah, you're, you're in a yoga class and you're doing a seated twist. And the, how most of us would move into the twist would be to inhale, so you lift, to turn, and then when you get there and you want to rest, you drop down. Okay? So and that, that will feel perfectly normal, perfectly natural. Um, so let's see its benefits. What's the benefit of doing that? Well, first of all, it feels natural. It feels normal to lift yourself up 
as you take a breath. So they're two separate actions that you're doing together. And then let go of your weight as you let go of the breath. Uh, where it's perfectly natural to want to relax so you drop down again but um, what you're left with is that habit it is you're turning and if you're relaxing it kind of goes with the out breath and in order to breathe you have to lift if you don't do that um, well, let, let's just stay in the posture for the moment what I'd like you to do is to focus on forget about the breath for a moment and just sort of wobble your weight around until you feel like the pressure under underneath each point of contact so underneath each foot as well as each sit bone is kind of equal about 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 the same so you're not just sitting back over your sit bones you're not just sitting forwards over the front of your base uh, you're not over to one side you know just sort of drift the weight around whilst you're relaxing and settled in a place where it feels like the weight is about equal and by the way you should be taking some weight through your hands as well because that's forming part of your support the thing I'm going to get you to do is to breathe not by lifting but by dropping so um, how do you, how do we lift our weight? The, the the way and this is this is one of my clues. The the way most of us lift to breathe and lift in space is by using the lumbers to lift your your body weight, or by and or using your neck to lift your the weight of your head. You don't want either of those things. You want to be able to let go of your weight into your support. So first of all we've organized things so that the weight's about equal. Then I'd like you to kind of actively relax your lower back until you're no, you know you're not holding yourself up anymore. Now I'd also like you to relax your neck but that's going to be a bit harder because most people will drop the weight of the head off the neck leaving the spine responsible for carrying the weight. If instead you can just have a gentle open expression in your face, kind of taking in your environment so that you are essentially with the space that you are occupying, if that makes some sort of sense. It's a relationship. It's you being present to everything around you. So soft focus, broad perspective uh, from the eyes, like you can, you're not looking, but you can see either side of you. And the support that allows the head, to, the neck to let go of the weight of the head without the head becoming suddenly heavy on the spine is when your shoulders, your wings are behind you whilst the face is forwards. That way giving weight to your hands can allow your head to be unheld by the neck. And if the, if the left side of the neck is holding your head up, then it's because the left shoulder needs to be further back so you can relax forwards from it. If the right side of your neck is holding your head up, then the right shoulder needs to be further back so as you lean through your hand so that your face can rest forwards. Okay? So uh, um, taking yourself into the detail of leaning into your hands, just check that you're not lifting with your lower back, you're not holding yourself up. You might be a little more extended, but you shouldn't be holding that position. And check that your, uh, the base underneath your sit bones and feet are also receiving weight as much as your hands are, so your head can float. And deliberately let go of tension through to your base, through to your hands and your base, in order to breathe. And the breath will come in as it comes in. And if you notice the breath coming in to actually support you in space, and you're relating to giving your weight down through contact, your, your arms might be working to support the weight of the head. Your base can be relatively relaxed, I think, your legs. 
And what I want you to notice is the surrender of your weight as you breathe into your ground should give you a different sense of the arriving breath. If you did this without your hands, you'd feel your core work. So just make, uh, forget about your head for a moment, forget about your hands for a moment, and make sure you can let go of your weight into your base to breathe while slightly turning. And the result should be some sort of activity from your breathing gear, your, your belly muscles and your rib cage. We're adding the hands so that the head isn't heavy on the spine. So you should get a feeling if um, if you can let go of the weight of the head in order to breathe, you should get a feeling that the breath is something that kind of grabs hold of the scruff of the neck to support you up. So essentially what, what is happening is if you let go of your weight in order to breathe, your breathing gear supports you. And uh, holding the breath for a moment and kind of balancing with the, with a relaxed but held breath as you balance your weight again can give you that feeling of floating supported by the breath okay so it what, what uh, it, it doesn't look look like much on screen but if you followed the instructions let's try the other side what, what you're trying to educate your body to be able to do is to let go of lifting as you breathe. And in order to do that, you need to feel supported. So it would be by even weight through your relaxed base and a little bit of responsive support from the hands as they catch the weight of your head. That's what you're looking for. So a little bit of effort from the arms to lean through them and feel supported but you need to relax your back so when you drop your weight evenly through your base and your hands in order to breathe notice how that breath arrives notice the kind of natural responses of the core and the catching of your weight with your hands and if you want to experience how the breath is supporting you in that you can hold the breath because you'll be busy noticing the efforts if you hold the breath by closing your throat and then relax into it the body will drift hopefully into a place of balance which you can measure by the equalness of support underneath you When you found that balance where you're essentially floating in space without having to hold yourself up and you let the breath go, once again, you let it go into your base. You let your weight go. And if you let, if you let your weight go through your hands, it's like your chest and your arms fall away from your face, giving the feeling of your face growing lighter away from the ground without you lifting it that's with the release of the breath do the same again set it up with the inhale you let go of your weight in order to breathe with nothing in your body catching it you're catching your weight apart from your hand and the passive base underneath you hold it for a moment drift around until you are sure that the held breath can float you in space and that will be when you have equal contact and when you uh when you let that breath go provided you haven't held it for too long when you let it go you let your weight go through your base including your hands but um, if you notice it through your sit bones and feet what will happen on the inside is a release away from the ground so you should notice the arriving breath can support you by you releasing your weight When you let go of that breath, as you give your weight down through your base, there is a, an emptying on the inside that is effectively a movement away from the ground, making you lighter. And if you get that 
happening in the lower half of the body. Let's try the first side. Hold the breath, organize it till you have equal contact and you're floating. And then let the breath go. The belly empties up away from the ground. Chest and arms fall away from the face. And the result will be a movement up away from the ground and out into space. If you can remember to open your eyes and be in space. One more time. See if you can leave your face in space. If you can leave your eyes open, your head relaxed. It's weight relaxed because the wings are behind you. But enough relaxed weight through your sit bones and feet for your back to relax. See if you can let go to breathe into your ground. But allow that breath to float you in space. When you let go of that breath, let it fall away from where you are in space, but you also let it release away from the ground on the inside. Essentially what you're practicing to do is to relax your weight, to relax your weight as you breathe and to relax in space as you breathe. To relax your weight as you release the breath away from you, but also to release into space as you release the breath away from you. Now, I don't know about you, but that intention kind of brought me, brought my mind into a very centered, very quiet place that wasn't sleepy and my body wasn't heavy and the outcome of going through that process of seeing if I can let go into the ground to breathe with the kind of oppositional sense of releasing into space when I let go of the breath it might be an unusual feeling but it's, and because it's the opposite of what we normally do, lift to breathe, collapse to release the breath. But the body should feel different. You should feel kind of more centered, more stronger in the middle, freer on the outside, more centered in your awareness and able to take in your environment um, without your eyes having to dart about to look for whatever it is you're looking for. It essentially leads to, by, by, by taking away that um, habit of, I suppose the easiest thing of lifting to breathe and collapsing to release the breath, and replacing it with the idea that it's the breath itself that's meant to support you as you do things. The body itself responds completely differently. The arriving breath isn't something you have to take it's something that happens and makes you strong. The releasing breath isn't something you have to push out. It's something that releases inwards as you allow yourself to release outwards, both into your ground and into the space that you occupy. And these movements in space come from the spine itself, particularly the spine behind the heart, the thoracic spine doing the work. It's using the purchase of the ground to move you in space, as opposed to you falling over, as opposed to you pulling your weight over to one way or the other, as opposed to you reaching out and uncentering, so you end up catching your weight with your body. So um, it's a different way of organizing your flow. Um, uh, I, I, won't do, I won't do too much, I'll just do a quick, quick thing here. So instead of lifting to breathe and then put, dropping, being heavy, and then pushing to breathe out with the dog pose, if I can drop my weight through my touch to breathe, and if that arriving breath supports me in space without me having to hold myself up, 
is it does so because I'm giving weight to the ground underneath my feet, my knees and the hands. When I release that breath, release it inwards, away from my touch, towards my centre. When I release that breath, provided I, I want to move in space, I can allow that inward release to go with an outward release through my hands and through my feet. An outward expression. In the posture, the same again. Instead of trying to stretch myself and push myself around, I can get what I want if I can find support from the breath by letting go of my weight through my hands and my feet. And if that arriving breath supports me where I want to be, so you can hold the breath whilst you organise yourself, until I can relax through to my hands, until I can relax through to my feet, I feel supported by the breath. And I let that breath go. It's an inward release towards the middle, allowing my body to open outwards. And because the, my intention is to feel supported, the feeling is a lot more like relaxing into a posture. Um, might slow it down, might slow your flow down because you're doing something different. But there's no reason for um, it to be a to have to be a slow, controlled thing. You can just learn to let go of your weight to breathe, and let go of your weight to release the breath, and allow your body to do what it wants to do in the process. So you can get a different style of flow. But it's far more centering, far more, far more relaxing. It actually does, makes changes, which I think yoga practice is for. It's not just for um, sustaining the way you do things already. It's for improving it, I believe. So anyway, I shall um, continue with a bit more of a class for my um, premium members on my website. You can you can sign up to that if you're interested um, in getting the, the full class version of these yoga solutions. That, uh, you, you can get a one week free trial if you like and um, uh, if you don't like it you just cancel it before you pay anything. But uh, it, it's, um, it's f uh, just four pounds something a month. So a bit more than a pound a week um, if, if you want to continue and there's uh, I have been saying 150 of these for, for a, a while now, so I'd imagine there's about 200 of these now. Um, little sort of half-hour classes on um, uh, particular themes that you might find useful in your practice. So, um, yes, for... Yeah, that, that'll do. Uh, come and join me on Saturday. Uh, whenever, whenever I do a yoga solutions towards the end of the week like this, um, quite often the theme stays with me through to the weekend so if you enjoyed that and you want to go really deep with it and explore it in lots of different things um, as, well, as well as signing up for a silver membership which is pound a week um, you can come and join me on a zoom workshop um, very effective I can see what's going on if you do a if you buy an interactive place um, you can you can get it cheaper for view only as well if, if you're not that bothered about me seeing your practice or if you can't make it and you but you would like to uh, do the workshop in your own time. You, if you sign up for a view only place, it's half price and um, you get the download anyway. So, all right, see, uh, yeah, that's this Saturday, 10.30 start on Zoom. You can book it on the website, links below. And uh, yes, I shall see you same time, same place next week. Much love, bye now.